Joining me now for more on this is CNN senior law enforcement analyst Charles Ramsey. He's a former Philadelphia police commissioner, of course, and former D.C. police chief. Also here with us, retired Los Angeles police sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Thank you both for being here. Chief, we don't know what happened before this video. Omar laid out that very clearly, but what do you see? Well, certainly looking at the video, it appears the force is excessive beyond what's needed. Now, whether or not it was necessary to have any level of force, it depends on the situation. Officers have the right and the ability to use force to effect an arrest. The issue is whether it's too much force. And when you look at the one officer kneeing the individual in the head, punching him in the face, even lifting his head and pushing it into the pavement, uh, that is beyond what's necessary. And so... Uh, that's a case that obviously has to be thoroughly investigated. I don't know if the officers were wearing body cameras to see, you know, another uh, uh, angle or what was going on. But certainly it is very, very troubling uh, to see that sort of thing going on. Again, primarily the attack uh, of, of the uh, face and head area uh, of the individual. Sergeant. This is underway, under investigation um, now, as Omar laid out. The governor has put out a statement saying, um, really, that the local arrest incident in Crawford County will be investigated pursuant to the video evidence and the request of the prosecuting attorney. What questions, what questions do you have for these officers? Um, well, you know, I'm not really sure I have a question for the officer. The video speaks for itself, but I mean, why? Uh, what, what sort of uh, resistance, non-compliance was this person putting forth that would warrant the kind of abuse. And listen, this was just punishment, um, Kate. This was not about taking this young man into custody. We don't see at any point one of those officers reach for handcuffs to try to uh, get this uh, man into custody. We don't see them do anything other than punish him. And listen, you have three officers from two different agencies who were unbothered by witnesses who were recording this excessive use of force. They themselves assaulted and battered this young man, and they didn't even have impulse control enough when one woman yelled, stop, he needs medication, to do just that. Rather, they warned her and continued to smash his head into the ground, kick and punch him unnecessarily. This was over-the-top, outrageous, and egregious. Chief, when we talk about um, violent police encounters, you have often said to me at least two things come to question in mind. Is it necessary and is it proportional? How do you know if it's necessary and proportional when it comes to something like this? Well, uh, we don't have the beginning of this to know whether or not it was necessary to even begin with taking him to the ground or whatever. But proportionality, based on the amount of the level of resistance to overcome that resistance, and as the sergeant mentioned, you know, he looks more like he's in a defensive uh, posture, which any of us would be if you're being punched in the face and head and being kneed in the side, as opposed to actual resisting. And so when you look at it, you look at the totality of circumstances, it may be necessary to use some level of force. But here, was it proportional? I would say no. And was it objectively reasonable? And I would say no to that as well. Sergeant, the fact that just the, 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 the simple fact that there are three people on top of one person here, I mean, does that kind of change the calculation that you should have when you're thinking about the use of force? Well, listen, I mean, we always want the numbers to be on our side when we en encounter someone, particularly if you wind up grappling uh, with an individual. And this is someone who was uh, purported to be mentally ill. And sometimes they have the strength, as someone said earlier, of 10 men. And so I get it. But at the same time, one officer could have been responsible for uh, cuffing this individual, and the other two could have been subduing him, not punishing him, not beating him. These are officers who were drunk with power, and whatever went on before this video started certainly has nothing to do with the assault and battery that these officers inflicted on this, on this gentleman. Because I was actually going to ask you then, Chief, about that. Do you think there is an action or something that could have happened ahead of this video that would justify what's on this video from these officers? No, not what's on the video. Now, it may justify some level of force being necessary to take him into custody, but it escalated way beyond what it was needed at the time when you're looking at that video. That's my issue. Uh, we don't know what happened just prior that would cause them to use any level of force. And I'm not saying that he was going to just, you know, peaceably go uh, get into custody. We don't know the answer to that. But when you look at the video and you see the punches to the head, you see the lifting of the head and pushing it into the, into the pavement, the kneeing of the individual and so forth, that's where it becomes excessive. Again, 
An officer can use force to effect an arrest. The issue is how much is too much. And when you look at that video, clearly it goes beyond what was needed. Chief, thank you. Sergeant, thank you so much for being here.